In today's video, we're going to take a look at the latest B-Snagger Q-Rig and how you can take it from grey plastic to tabletop in no time. Welcome back to the Studio Collectors. In today's video, let's take a closer look at the new B-Snaggers Q-Rig. Just by opening the box, we already know that this is going to be a beast of a project. There's so many components and the entire miniature is based on the same size as an Imperial Knight. And of course, approaching such a large and daunting project can be really intimidating. However, fret not because this video is here to take you step by step of how I would approach a project such as this so that you can take it from grey plastic to fully painted tabletop in absolutely no time at all. This video will contain really simple tricks such as dry brushing and washing so that painters from all levels can follow this efficiently and quickly. So moving on to concept, my approach to this is I really wanted to finish this kill rig as soon as possible with as little time as possible. And of course, being me, I like to have this kill rig painted up to a minimum standard. So my requirements for this model will be firstly to have adequate part separation. This will allow the viewer to well distinguish the different components of the kill rig so it doesn't look like one undiscernible clump. Secondly, it needs to stand out from the tabletop because this is fundamentally a tabletop commission and the client will be using this kill rig in his games. I really want this to be the centerpiece model of the entire game and therefore the colors used need to stand out from each other. Lastly, because this is going to be the centerpiece model, there are going to be people looking up close. I want to allow every single detail that is sculpted be showcased prominently on the model when people actually inspect the model up close. So those were my requirements approaching this project and in order to achieve this, I'm going to be using a lot of contrast paint and a lot of dry brushing so that this saves as much time as possible. So if you're ready to take on this beast of the model, let's head on to the chapter where we'll be assembling this model. So as I mentioned, this is really one beast of a model and this huge quick at the front of the kill rig is definitely going to be a focus point for the model. However, because Games Workshop has sculpted this model in two parts, split right down the middle, there's going to be a really obvious gap right in the middle of this quick and we need to fix that. So this part of the video serves as a tutorial how you can fix the more obvious gaps through gap filling and for this stage, I'll be using the AK Grey Party as well as some sanding sponges to sand down the surface. Alright, so let's get this ready and let's get gap filling this monster of a squig right now. Alright, so as you can see, there's a humongous gap in between the model. So what we're going to do is we're going to just fill it in with Party and we're going to do it in a perpendicular fashion. Don't worry if you apply the Party a little bit too thick and obscure a little bit of detail because Generally, this squeak is pretty large and the putty sends off pretty easily. So when you send away the putty, what you leave behind is, is a very beautiful clear edge and filled gap which you can use to paint later on. Okay, so right here I'm going to be using an 800 grit sanding sponge. Why I like using the sanding sponge during this stage is because the sanding sponge is soft it kind of conforms to the curvy lines on this squid. As you can see, you want to send it to a point that you just leave the putty in the gap and the rest of the plastic looks bare and clean. So now with that huge gap filled up and sanded down, we are going to move on to the airbrushing stage. This airbrushing stage only serves as a zenithal highlighting and it will really speed up the process a lot. However, if you don't have an airbrush, that's okay too. Remember, you can always replicate this process through overbrushing and dry brushing. Links on the tutorial of how you can do this for yourself will be right here and down in the descriptions below. And because some of our footage somehow got lost in the warp, I deeply apologize for not having the airbrushing footage of that monstrous squid. Sorry about that. But anyways, I'll be talking through the entire process where the entire kill rig has been primed brown and the accompanying features such as the ox as well as the squigs have been primed black. Subsequently, we'll go on with a zenithal highlighting 
So after Zenithal highlighting the squig, I painted the squig using AK Dark Flash for the underbelly as well as Brick Red. And these are the colors that I'll be using for the squig. So it's just painting it from the bottom and the top so that you get this nice smooth transition from red to this brownish flash. So for this Zenithal highlighting stage, these are the colors that I'll be using. Alternatively, these Game Workshop colors will work just fine. So let's get out all these colors and let's get airbrushing right now. Alright, so right here I'm going to be using white grey to do the Zenithal highlighting. I'm going to do this for the entire model. I'm also going to be using the colors that I mentioned previously for the squig. So we're just going to hit the squig with the Zenithal highlight. Thereafter, we're going to hit it with the red and then the brown. So this Zenota highlight is really important because we're going to be using a lot of contrast paint and this will save us a ton of time. I always recommend Zenito with contrast painting. So now with the monster of a squig already base coated, we take our attention now onto the kill rig itself. So because the kill rig has been prime brown, we're just going to be dry brushing the entire surface to pick on the little details. Thereafter, we're going to be base coating the main areas, white and burnt red, because these are the colors that are used on the box art and I want to replicate the box art as closely as possible. So for this stage, I'll be using these colors right here. Alternatively, these colors will work just fine. So let's get up these few colors and let's get base coating and dry brushing the kill rig right now. Alright, so over a prime surface of black, I'm just going to be dry brushing this um, gunmetal from AK Gen 3 all over the kill rig. I find that this adds a lot of texture and, and adds a lot of little details such as the scratches on the metal surfaces. Alright. Next up, I'm going to be using white grey and white grey will be used to base coat the platform. Okay. Alternatively, of course, you can always use white scar to base coat these areas. We're just going to be following the box art. Very easy, very simple. Moving on to the red areas, I'll be using AK Gen 3 Burn Red and cover up the little embellishments on the armor plates. Do take note, you want to cover up the edges too because these edges are also made of this red material. And after you finish this, it's like wow, 50% of the model is already done. We are really really blitzing through the mini here and it looks like large swaths of the mini have already been complete. So now we turn our attention to the little details and because the kill rig is so big, the little details tend to be full size of boys and knobs. So for this stage, I'll be entirely using contrast paint and I'll only be using one custom contrast mix so that we can produce the ox skin as closely to the box art as possible. So for this stage, I'll be using these colors right here. So let's get out all these contrast colors and let's get contrasting the ox right now. Alright, so uh, this is my custom ox flash color. I find that the ox flash is really too saturated so I've mixed in, in with click barrel flash. I've done this in a ratio of about 5 to 1. 5 click barrel flash and 1 drop of ox flash. Remember, when doing um, this contrast paint, you want to do this pretty liberally. Don't be afraid to waste the paint because if you don't do this, you are going to end up with a sub-optimal result. Okay, next up, we're going to be using Space Wolf's Grey. This is going to be for all the cloth and all the damnin that these ox are wearing. Just straight out of the bottle, no thinning. Next up, Yenden Yellow for these World Boys, yellow lightning embellishments. This yellow might not be directly applicable for the rest of the boys but definitely for this world boy, it brings a lot of attention because this is the only yellow piece in the entire model. Next up, I'm going to be using Skeleton Hot and these are going to be for the bone areas on the model itself. So you just want to pick up these bone areas such as the bones as well as the teeth if you have 
not painted them in green like I have. Okay, next up we're gonna be using Apothecary White. Apothecary White is a grey wash and I find that this is a good contrast to Skeleton Hot because it's definitely much cooler in temperature. And then next up we're gonna be using Gore Grunter Fur. So Gore Grunter Fur in my opinion when you paint it over hard surfaces such as this embellishment over the skull gives it a very copper look. This copper non-metallic metal stands out very nicely against the very dark colours that are around it. Next up, we're going to be using Ultramarine's Blue. So Ultramarine's Blue, we're going to be painting in some cables. We're just going to be painting in all the cables in all sorts of funky colours. Next, I'm going to be using Blood Angel's Red. So this is going to be used to cover another wire. I'll also be using Eandon Yellow to cover some of the wires to make the World Boy's dreadlocks look a little bit more colourful. So now with the wires done, I'm going to be using Megos Purple to paint in the internals, such as the tongue and then the rest of the mouth. And thereafter, I'm going to be using Basilicarium Grey to coat in the metal areas, such as his helmet, the metal parts around him as well as the chain across his chest. As you can see, this method is really quick and it gets all the base coating done so fast. Don't even need to shade after this. So now that most of the model is complete, we're now going to paint on some little details. For this stage, I'll be applying some weathering details so that the orc kill rig doesn't look like it's fresh out of the factory. So for this stage, I'll be using these colours right here. Alternatively, these colours will work just fine. So let's get these colours ready and let's get chipping the orc kill rig right now. So now we're going to add in a little bit of chipping and I'm going to be using chocolate chipping from AK Gen 3. And for this, I'm just going to be dabbing in the white areas by the side of the edges. Alright, this gives the impression that the paint has chipped off. And I'm going to be using a little bit of dead red and this dead red will be used to edge highlight and it's kind of like an overbrush method that I used to just pick out the edges and scratch off some of the little details to show that this gun has a little bit of texture. So now for the finishing touches, I'll be just applying some decals and there's nothing too spectacular here. I'll be using two of my favourite decal products which is Mark Setter and Mark Softer. Alright, so let's get all these decal products ready. Let's apply the decals on the kill rig right now. And all we got to do left is to add in the decal. So I'm just going to be adding Mark Setter right here. And I'm going to be just pasting on the decals. So the decals are water soluble. You're just going to be putting on the decals like that. Just put them in place and let them dry. And thereafter, quick coat of varnish over the entire thing. And the model is done. And there we have it. What a beauty. It's really a beast of a project to approach. But don't worry, if you follow this tutorial, you will definitely be able to tackle it as easily as possible. So we have come to the end of the video and I'd like to thank you for watching all the way to the end. So remember, if you'd like to support the channel and like to see more of such content, like and subscribe below because it helps us keep the light on and it keeps me producing content such as this. And if you want to support the channel even further, why not head on to the Patreon and become a Patreon today. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my Patrons for allowing me to do this. And remember, if you'd like me to have a look at your work and possibly leave a comment, tag me on Instagram and I'll be happy to take a look at your stuff. Thanks for watching all the way to the end once again and I hope to see you in the next miniature painting video. See you!